believe this is for you right now. Jesus said this in John 16, verse 33. He said, I've spoken these words to you so that you can have peace. He said, in the world, you will have trials, tribulations, troubles, distress. But he said, be of good cheer because he said, I've overcome the world. Wow, that's for you and me right now. Precious Heavenly Father, I just pray for your child right now, right where they are. I pray for your child, Lord, that their heart would be open to receive Jesus' words and his peace. Lord, in this world, we have troubles and trials and tribulation, but Lord, we can be of good cheer right now, right now, because Jesus has perfectly overcome the spirit of this world, the spirit of the Antichrist. Greater is he who is in us than he that's in the world. Precious Heavenly Father, we receive your help right now as we turn once again to God, your word, your unfailing promises, your word, and we just ask that the Holy Spirit would imprint it on our heart so that our inner reality can quickly become our outer reality of peace, life, joy, and abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. We're on Wisdomology Part 2, and we're going to specialize on this word, order. Did you know order is the border to success? That's why I want to feature the word order right now. In part one, we learned that wisdom is the principal thing. It's fundamental. Everything in life needs a foundation, and wisdom is the principal thing, the container for the hot stuff, the good stuff, the blessings of life. Now let's look again at Proverbs 4, verse 7. It's so important. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Throughout this series, we will continue to feature the book of Proverbs. And as you know, I love the book of Proverbs. I mean, I love all of God's word, but Proverbs was my favorite book as a boy. So me and Proverbs, we have a little bit of an amazing history together. That's right. In this segment, Let's build. Let's talk about how wisdom builds. That's why we need order. Wisdom is the master builder of the cosmos and all the galaxies. Wisdom is the architect of life. It is the engineer of every true solution. God does not, listen to this, God does not do anything. He has never done anything, ever created anything without the help of wisdom. That's why we're featuring this whole series called Wisdomology. God does everything with wisdom. I have a good friend, Norm, who's a professional builder with a successful residential building company. I love watching the whole building process. From a plan and an empty lot to a beautiful house for a family to make a home and create all kinds of lifelong memories. I just love it. I love watching that process. It's interesting that when people buy a house, they're often attracted to the finishes, the colors, and even things like the appliances and believe it or not, the knobs on the cabinets. Oh, I like that stovetop, and that tile is just so trending right now. Don't you just love those brass poles? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. But the critical thing is the invisible thing. Let me say that again. The critical thing is the invisible thing. Why don't you just say that out loud? The critical thing is the invisible thing. That's the foundation. It's the integrity, proper drainage, and the engineering of a structure is something that people usually never talk about or consider a major part of the value. But it truly is the big dollar stuff that makes your house a good build. A good build lasts. It's safe. Let's look at what Jesus said about the unseen part of a building. Luke 6, starting at verse 47. For everyone who comes to me and listens to my words in order to heed their teaching and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug and went down deep and laid a foundation upon the rock. And when a flood arose, the torrent broke against that house and could not shake or move it because it had been securely built or founded on a rock. Think of it. 
People usually don't care or think about what's under their house until a sinkhole opens up or a fault line and begins to actually swallow the whole house. Now the foundation matters, right? So let me tell you a story of an older carpenter who had worked for a builder for many, many years. One day he announced to his contractor boss, he said his plans were to retire and enjoy more time with his wife and family. Well, it sounds good. It was a calculated decision. He would miss the paycheck, but felt it was the right choice for him. The contractor was very sorry to see such an excellent carpenter and an employee go. So the builder asked the elderly carpenter if he'd build just one more house as a favor to him. He agreed to it, but over time it became apparent that his heart just wasn't into the work at all, not at all. The skillful carpenter began to do sloppy work like he'd never done before and he used inferior materials and he was cutting corners at every turn. It was really such an unfortunate way to end his otherwise excellent career as a carpenter. When the older carpenter finished his work, his employer came to inspect the house. Afterwards, the contractor shocked the old carpenter who was just standing there watching. The man smiled and he handed the front door key to the old man and he said, this is my gift to you. This is now your house. It's my retirement gift to you and your sweet, sweet wife. Can you just imagine how shocked that carpenter was? He thought he was just working a J-O-B something holding up his reward and retirement. And when the truth was, he was working at his future, at his reward. He was investing in his own blessing and he didn't even know it. Why? Because he didn't understand the order, the order of wisdom. Here's the moral of the story. Every day, Every day, you and I are living in a do-it-yourself project. We're always building something good or something crooked, sloppy, and not good. Wisdom helps remind us that we're building a life. We're building our house. With every choice that we make, we're building a life. The decisions that you make today will always be the life you live in tomorrow. That's order. O-R-D-E-R. -E That's order. Let me give you the Galatians 6, 7 version of this story. It says, don't be deceived. The wood that you cut today will be the house that you live in tomorrow. Isn't that good? Listen to Galatians 6, verse 9. Let us not grow weary and become discouraged in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap if we don't give up or give in. Let's consult wisdom again on how to build for good, how to build anything correctly, right? I want you to notice closely that what we're about to read, it's wisdom pointing to order. Proverbs 24, starting at verse 3. Through skillful and godly wisdom, a house, a life, a home, a family is built. And by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge, its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You see, the old carpenter missed out on a most excellent reward. Why? How did that happen? Because he wasn't consulting wisdom to comprehend that there is an order to life an order to blessing. Proverbs 24 isn't just talking about constructing a house or a bridge. It's talking about building a life, a home, a career, a profession, a marriage, a business, a future, your dream. Let me point out what it says. Wisdom first, then understanding, and then knowledge of precious riches. The filling. You've got to get first things first. Yes, life demands an order. Order is the border to success. I grew up with a single mom, so I never really saw a marriage work properly. I was very nervous about getting married because, well, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to fail, Pam. Most marriages I saw around me were either failures or just sad and broken. When I looked to God's word for answers, I realized that he was telling me that wisdom was the key. Not how good I was, but wisdom was the key. Wisdom did the work of building a marriage, building a home, building a life. Secondly, as I studied this portion of Proverbs 24, I recognized that there is an order. Wisdom, then understanding, 
then knowledge, then the filling. Did you know that God is a God of order? Even when he created things in Genesis 1, he did everything in a sequence. Check this out. Day one, God creates light. Then day two, he creates the heavens and the sky. On day three, God creates the earth, the seas, and the vegetation. Day four, God focuses on the sun and the moon. Day five, he creates the animals of the air and the sea. Then day six, the land animals and us humans. Then on day seven, God rests from all of his work of creation, which he ended up calling the Sabbath. God is a God of order. Over and over, we see it throughout his word. Look at Psalm 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are what? Ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Talking about God delights in this man or woman's way. When we are submitted to God, God actually orders. He one, two, threes our steps. Just just that simple act of having our steps ordered makes it so God, God Almighty delights in our way. I like the amplified version of this text. Check it out in Psalm 37, 23, amplified. The steps of a good man or a good woman are directed and established by the Lord. When he, God, delights in his or her way, God busies himself with his or her every step. Isn't that encouraging? Just imagine God busying himself with your steps, his wisdom supervising your decisions. Now that's an order that is the ultimate formula for success. God is in partnership with you. This is so important. Let's make sure we define order. Order is a sequence of steps, lines and boundaries with a defined goal, purpose and reward. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. God's wisdom always has order to it. It immediately divides and establishes boundaries. You can see that in Genesis 1. Years ago, the Lord gave me this wisdom. Order is the border to success. That's why I keep saying it. It's wisdom from God. Order is the border to your success. I challenge you to indulge in that wisdom. It has worked over and over for my life. I know it'll work for you too. Let me give you a picture of wisdomology that reveals the critical nature of order. It's like a staircase. Imagine with me walking into a house with a second floor. The house has luxurious high ceilings. The view from the second floor, it's just amazing. The owner says, come on up, but there's no staircase. The blessing is there. It's just waiting for you. You've been invited to come on up, but how? How do you access the second floor, the higher level? The answer, the staircase, the simple invention of the staircase. The staircase is such a simple, basic structure that it is the picture of order. Step one, step two, step three, and so on and so on. Simple, basic order. It may be boring, like no big deal, but this order is access to the next level of living, next level blessings, top floor concierge benefits. You've got dreams that are saying, come on up here. We want you, come on up. But without a staircase, you're stuck, aren't you? Wisdomology provides the staircase, but if you disrespect, if you ignore the order, you lose out. Order is one simple step after another. Understand this, the step is not the goal, okay? The step is not the goal, but part of the process. I've seen so many believers get offended with the process of the staircase because it's not the destination or the outcome, but just part of the process. So people become so, they become so miracle-minded that they show disrespect for God's order, for his blessings. Faith never, ever works independently of God's wisdom. Often when Jesus performed great miracles on earth, he employed order and steps even in the midst of the supernatural. Wisdomology 101 is understanding that order is God's way of doing things. It really is. God promises a garden and then he gives you seeds and ground to sow. Steps. God promises a family and then he gives you seeds of love and faithfulness. 
steps. God promises promotion, and then he gives you seed one, seed two, seed three, step one, two, three, steps. My friend, that is called the wisdom of God, the order of God, wisdomology 101. Why is it we celebrate order one minute, but then we disrespect God's order in the next moment? Let me show you what I mean here. Okay, this is gonna be good. Let's make a peanut butter and jam sandwich. Now, I, I think we all know that what it takes to make a P&J sandwich, you simply need some peanut butter, you need some jam, and you need some bread. Easy, right? Come on, how hard can this be? So let's make this beautiful thing happen. Here we go. We're putting on some, how about a little bit of jam? I mean, I love the jam, right? Let's get that jam in there. Oh, look at that, that's, that's gonna be yummy. And now what about the peanut butter? Can't miss out on that. I mean, how can it be a peanut butter and jam sandwich without peanut butter? There we go, look at that, getting it in every little nook and cranny and crevice. And then of course, you gotta have the bread, right? That's what makes it a sandwich. And so look at that, isn't that lovely? Of course not, it's a mess. Oh, now we really do need a napkin, right? Look at that. We sure don't want to be messy, do we? Are you kidding me? What an awful mess. What an, a complete disrespect for order. Look, I've seen kids under six do a better job of respecting order for the sandwich instead of that mess, <laughs> that sticky, awful, ugly mess. Why is it that we can have such respect for order when we're making a sandwich, but have such disrespect for order when it comes to eternal things, life and death things, important things, God's wisdom, God's one, two, three things. I've heard people pray things that are a complete contradiction to God's word and then say, well, you know, the Lord knows what I mean. I mean, God, he knows what I mean, right? Yes, I've seen people put one foot in front of another going up a staircase to accomplish what would be otherwise impossible. We seem to respect and celebrate order in so many things, but then God says, put me first. Well, well, God, I, I'm just too busy right now. You know, maybe later, I mean, if I can, if, if, if I get the time, but right, right now I gotta do this first. God says, humble yourself, then I'll exalt you. Well, God, how about you exalt me first because I really need the position and then I'll do that whole humility thing. You know, it's important, I'll get to it, but right now I kinda need the promotion. God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Well, God, you know, I, I know about that whole thing, but how about you help me first? Maybe even help me win the lottery and then out of that, I'll give. I mean, I'll give a really good offering, you'll see. God says, keep intimacy for inside the covenant of marriage. Our society says, you're crazy. That's crazy, man, no way. God says, consult me in all of your ways. Well, God, when it comes to religious things, I'll talk to you, but when it comes to the business stuff, you know, I, I need to call Jimmy first because he knows all about that. He's, he's pretty good with the whole cryptocurrency thing, and, uh, and I'm not sure that you're even into whole, the whole cryptocurrency thing, right, God? And when our marriages blow up, when our businesses go south and get really bad, when we get sick and it becomes hopeless, we say something like, well, we've tried everything else, I guess it's time to pray. Oh my goodness, Frank, has it come to that? And even when we pray, we refuse God's wisdom. We insist on a miracle solution, but have zero patience for God's wisdom when it comes to order, order. God, our Father, is trying to get his wisdom under us like the foundation of solid rock. Why? So that you can have a real life, a legacy, and honor. God wants that for you. Blessings are heavy, so God knows that the order of getting the fundamental foundation of wisdom under us is essential, and that's why we need order. Blessings and answers and goodness, they're all heavy, heavy things. It requires God's order. God's fundamentals, a foundation. Like big trees require big roots. Big trucks need big highways. The invisible building blocks of life are essential to everything good and weighty with honor for life. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom 
and in all you're getting, get understanding. Say this out loud. I need wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. There is genius to the basics. Something as simple as order. The staircase to blessing, to healing, to recovery, to influence. Think about putting on your clothes. Aren't you thankful you put them on after you shower and not before? <laughs> what a wet mess that would be. Think about the art of putting on your socks. Do you put them on after or before you put on your shoes? You see, that's the outcome of wisdomology. It's order. But you need to apply it to the most critical, important parts of your life right now. Your very beginning, the who you are, your identity, your eternal citizenship. There are very basic components and steps to the most complicated of networks, communities, and structures of life. These components may seem small, even invisible, but they're life-altering. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. You must get all of them in the correct order. The world often acts like our great-grandmother Eve and chases after the fruit on the pretty tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of knowledge. That mistake gets repeated over and over and over. Knowledge is the jam in the sandwich. It's the couch in the house. It's the paint on the wall. It's the brass pole on the drawer. It is the filling, but it's not the house. It's not fundamental. But without wisdom in place first, without the proper order of these things, you just end up with sticky jam in your hands, a lovely couch out in the rain, and a paint poured out on the grass. You don't have a legacy. You leave a tragedy. When you chase feelings, you end up with a fantasy. Your life becomes a bad, bad dream that sadly devolves into your reality. God has so much better for you, my friend, so much better. He wants you to have your peanut butter and jelly in the sandwich and be able to enjoy it with clean hands. Ah, no sticky, no sticky. Ask yourself, do you want to have a life, a family, a future, a legacy? Order wants to work for you. You see, that's wisdomology. Please don't tell me that you're going to show more respect for order when making a sandwich than building your life, your home, your marriage, your family legacy. Using order to put on your socks, but refusing to apply it to your morality is just, well, let's be honest, that's just stupid. Let me remind you again, Proverbs 24, starting at verse three. Through skillful and godly wisdom, a house, a life, a home, a family is built. And by understanding, it's established on a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge, its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You see, it's okay to want, even desire, verse four. But remember, if you start filling rooms that don't exist, you'll be repeating the sin in the Garden of Eden, compromising God's order and your future. God was trying to give Adam and Eve wisdom, the one, two, three steps, and instead they reversed the order and lost their identity. They lost their Garden of Eden citizenship. They got exiled from the garden of blessing because they reversed the order. That was the sin, a reversal of order, and it cost them their entire garden of Eden citizenship. The first thing we all need to do is return. Return to our foundation. Return to the proper order, the unfailing rock to build your life on. Do you know how to do that? Psalm 18 verse 2 says, the Lord is my rock. Receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and let him expertly direct all the orders of your life. You're going to be amazed at the outcome. John 1 verse 12, one of my faves, but to as many as did receive Jesus, God gave them the authority, the power, privilege, right to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in, trust in, and rely on His name, His identity. If you want the order straight in your life, and you want wisdom building your future for you, on the rock, on a great foundation, then pray this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, say that out loud. I need you. I need your wisdom in my life. 
Forgive me of all my sins. You died on the cross for me, rose up from the grave. I set my mind on your wisdom, on your unfailing word of life. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. In your name, Jesus, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.